Hello, I'm Sam. I'm Mitch. I'm Drew. And I'm Govinda. We are Senior Design Group from NDSU. And this is our presentation. The motorized training vehicle for uh, uh, Ann College and Settle in Jamestown, North Dakota for Natalie. And our advisor is Dr. Schroeder. Okay, so just a brief introduction. Um, the research has shown that if a child has a um, disability, and he is in pace with um, the other kids, then at least the cognitive ability is the same as the uh, normal kids. And um, here, Dr. Cole Galloway that's how you pronounce it, um, has um, modifying store bought by young cars to give children with disabilities their mobility, also to help them with their physical disability. And um, the problem with this is that the power chairs chosen are for the kids above six years, and uh, they're very um, standard motorized wheelchairs. And the solution we found is to make a power chair, which is uh, for children of the age two to four, and also which doesn't look intimidating to their parents or to the children as well. Okay, so some basic requirements, uh, basically just enough battery power to actually push the car at least 800 feet. Um, and ideally the supervisor would uh, charge it daily um, and it should be able to carry at least a 50 pound user. Um, and as far as like clearance restrictions, just able to go through a standard doorway, down a hallway, up a ramp. Um, and then the supervisor would also be able to at a minimum, stop the uh, car and reverse the direction of the handheld uh, key fob in case the uh, user was not able to do that themselves and have a variable speed from 0.2 to 1.5 miles an hour. Uh, and then the user would be able to turn the joystick on and off with a, a key switch and they could uh, choose to have it mounted on the left or right side. And as far as environment, it's mainly going to be inside on hard uh, floor, um, but possibly maybe be driven outside on like a sidewalk or maybe on carpet. Um, and then as far as some safety, uh, uh, four point safety harness seat belt and uh, lateral side supports with a 90 degree seat to keep them nice and sturdy. And then uh, uh, front and back sensors that would stop the chair if they got too close to the supervisor's set distance, I think. Uh, control themselves. Okay, these are the technical, this is the technical content for our project. Um, basically the initial startup of the, for the initial startup of the wheelchair, you will flip the main switch and then you'll be able to flip the secondary switch which is for the user itself. That will allow you to drive the vehicle. Um, you must have the joystick center to be able to drive the vehicle once that switch is flipped. Once it shows that the joystick is centered, then you'll be able to use that joystick to drive around. Um, now, uh, as far as um, the sensors, basically it just, it's roughly zero volts for um, like 30 centimeters and up to like three meters for five centimeters away from objects. And, the supervisor would be able to control how far that uh, trip distance is with uh, uh, two pots located on the back of the chair. Oh, it might roll basically tells the H bridge um, with just analog signal. We have D-day convert D-day converters. Um, there's also two inputs that control the forward and reverse directions of the motors. Um, and the uh, H bridge also has a sink which usually sinks the brakes, sinks current to the brakes to dissipate the brakes. I'm sure also use a lot of speed bodies. So there's a lot of IO on the project as a whole. Um, the pictures you'll see later in the PowerPoint have many headers on the PCB, so it's quite quite extensive. So yeah. There's also a supervisor control remote, so there's a wireless remote. Anything else? Charging and the your LED voltage thing. 
And then there will also be uh, an LED voltage indica indicator showing how much charge is left. It's going to be most likely five lights showing green to red, how much voltage that's left in between about 28 volts and then down to anywhere to five volts. Uh, and then also with charging, we do have a separate charging cord that plugs into the charger that came with the power wheelchair that we have integrated into our uh, control board. And then this is basically the, the whole guts and brains of the actual. So as you can see, like you were saying, there's a lot of, uh, uh, basically a lot of inputs and a lot of outputs going to the pick. Um, you know, and then we have our three sensors, the uh, pods that control their distance, um, the speed control, and then the drift control that correct um, if it's curving one way or the other, um, the wireless transmitter, the sinks going to, and uh, going to the H bridge, the whole charging circuitry, and the joystick and LED controls. So here's basically our PCB components. Uh, the left picture is the top side of the board. The right picture is the bottom side of the traces. On the top left, so that's where the RF receiver is. We have a receiver transmitter. Transmitter. And the supervisor can use that to, to control the direction and um, back up or either stop the child um, child's movement in the chair. So on. Um, here's all our I.O. on the board, all the blue headers. Pink takes up a good size of it. Um, it's a pretty extensive board though. So the middle is our joystick control, and there's three LEDs on the joystick. Um, uh, here's our H bridge uh, that controls the current to the motors. Quite sizable wire there. Um, here's our main disconnect switch. Um, fuses. There's pictures of everything wired up, all the different assemblies. And, uh, yeah. Fan for cooling. Fan. Little air indicator lights, so if something's not working right, they can quickly open it, and depending on which LED is lit, the supervisor can know what's wrong and correct it. Uh, it's some of the problems we encountered were um, the uh, wireless module that we got was actually or had the wrong um, pinouts, um, and it took a little longer for some of the parts to uh, get here. Um, and the PCB took a, about two weeks to actually get milled. Um, and then, kind of in the beginning, it was uh, maybe a little difficult trying to figure out and nail down uh, what the client needed and their specifications and then basically just kind of starting with you know do we build this totally from scratch or do we get um, bits and pieces like the wheelchair base we have and build up from there. Um, the lessons learned well um, the earlier you start the quicker you finish and um, Splitting up the tasks between all four of us helped us do it even quicker. And um, if you pull all lighters, you can complete your project on time. Okay, and this is our budget. Uh, our original budget uh, that was given to us was four thousand um, dollars. We did exceed that budget by a little bit. Um, you said four thousand. Four thousand. I mean a thousand dollars. We did exceed our budget there a little bit um, by about six hundred ninety-two dollars. <laughs> Um, we found it difficult. The things that we found difficult about uh, sticking to that budget was uh, some of the things that were very much needed was the um, wheelchair base itself was something that we could not do without. It helped us get done quicker because it took out much of the mechanical issues that we were having to deal with with designing the wheelchair. Another thing that was spendy but also very much needed was also the chair that the kids would be sitting on because it provided us 
with the right sort of harness, the right padding, and also the ability to adjust the seat so that it would be a 90 degree angle. Uh, some of the things that were spendy were the batteries and the H-bridge. Those are the things that were also very much needed. Um, H-bridge itself helped us to complete the project on time without having to deal with any issues with uh, power or um, currents, stuff like that. Um, there was a lot of little things that we had to use too, um, but those were very significant. Those were things that we did know about and did not have to worry about in our budget. And I guess another reason we maybe went a little over budget is since this is actually going to be used for an outside client and for a very or a user at a very young age, we wanted to make sure that the stuff we put on the chair would be safe and would not harm the user. Uh, to summarize, we um, found a solution to all the problems we discussed in the beginning of, of the presentation, including um, we made a power chair which is for children of the age 2 to 4 and um, which looks aesthetically pleasing enough, we think. Um, and well, we did go over budget, but then we completed our project.